Okay guys, this video is long overdue. Um, I dropped the kids off at school and uh, decided there's nobody here but me. So I decided I'd make this video. Like I said, it's been long overdue. What set the, set me off to making this video is uh, in one of my iguana groups, I keep seeing people ask how you, how you quote, tame an iguana. They ask crazy mother. I'm gonna give y'all some pointers and some tips on, like I said, how to tame your iguana. I actually don't think any wild animal that you encounter can be tamed. You are not its boss. You can become friends with pretty much any animal out there, but you're you're never gonna be you're never gonna tame it, and you're never gonna be its boss. When it comes to animals like dogs and cats dogs and cats have been domesticated for thousands of years so we're still not a dog's boss or a cat's boss we're their friends they're just a lot more uh, tolerant of us as a uh, species because they've been domesticated over the the years okay enough rambling guys to get into it let me figure out where I'm gonna put the camera that way it gets good uh, a view of Isabella right there. I'll go ahead and open her glass. She's staring at me. So you can see there's there's Isabella. Um, let me figure out where I'm gonna, like I said, where I'm gonna put this camera. <clears throat> I want it to be a good uh, view on me in her cage. So I'll, let me stick it right here. Uh, I'll stick it actually in her cage <coughs> you see me guys <laughs> you probably see me okay uh, the first thing when it comes to uh, wanting to become a friend with an, an iguana uh, red iguanas are a lot uh, you want me touching your tail or what what are you doing what are you doing put that um, when it comes to iguanas, the red iguana is actually, uh, they end up being, their they, their tails get a lot longer. She's not going to like this. I'm going to show you, pull this little stuck shed on the end, end of her tail off. Um, they don't like being touched right here where the knuckle is for their tail. There's a bone right here. So this part of their tail and below... They really don't like uh, being touched on the tail. If you can get an iguana to let you kind of... I mean, it's early in the morning, guys, so she just woke up. Um, if, you can let a, if you can get an iguana to let you touch their tail like this, you're doing good. Um, the, fir the, the first step in being uh, a friend is don't force the animal... Don't force the animal to... Uh, do what it does not want to do. Uh, for instance, instance, she didn't want me touching her tail, so I I reminded her that I'm not here to hurt her. I'm actually, like I said, she she just woke up, so she just doesn't really want me to mess with her right now because she's cold. Uh, she's she's getting warm up, warmed up. The first thing you need to understand is a. Uh, Iguanas are not a good pet. If you're wanting a pet, you know, something that you take out and play with, um, I suggest you get a bearded dragon or some smaller lizard, a leopard gecko, um, something smaller. As you can see, uh, Isabella is actually, she's actually going on about five foot six now in length from her, from her nose to her tail. 
and uh, she's in shed right now. She's shedding her spikes, and uh, large lizards like her do not make very good pets if you're wanting a pet to play with. I mean, that's that's pretty much a given when it comes to uh, the big lizards, guys. Uh, so, first thing is, if you're wanting a pet that you want to play with, don't choose an iguana because you think it's going to be cool to have an iguana. And you think it's going to sit on your shoulder and uh, you're going to be able to walk it around a leash. You can do all that stuff, but don't expect it. You know, every animal is different. I'm just going to give you all some advice about how I approach approach uh, animals in general. I have a lot of different animals. I have uh, rehabbed a whole bunch of different kinds of animals. She is my my second iguana that I've owned and probably my sixth iguana that I have, quote, tamed down or actually gotten her where she trusts people. Uh, when I got Isabella, she was a year and a half or two years old. And the gentleman that gave her to me said that he had no idea what he was doing. She was mean as hell. And uh, she would try to bite. She was a tail whipper. She was, she'd really try to bite you. Uh, I had her pretty much uh, trusting me within a month. Uh, a lot of it has to do with how you approach an animal. Uh, the worst advice I have seen on the internet when it comes to pretty much any animal, especially with the iguanas, is people will tell you that you need to hold them every day. You need to grab them, make them, make them sit still and hold them. There's people that will get uh, recommend you get like a towel or a blanket and wrap it around the iguana and make it stay still and hold it. Now, where they get the that uh, information from that that's a good way to tame any animal if somebody wanted to be your friend and they wrapped you up in a blanket and made you stay by them would you want to have anything to do with them you know think about it guys the same way is you got to look at it from being a friend not taming down uh, if you wanted to go make a friend you're not gonna force somebody to be your friend so what makes that what makes you think that an iguana is gonna you're gonna force an iguana to be your friend that's horrible freaking advice in my opinion uh, the first thing you're gonna want to know is you need to know a little bit about the animal that you are uh, trying to become friends with um, iguanas have the main thing when the, uh, iguanas have a perito eye which is a third eye on the top of their head. It's like a, an, it's like a sensor on the top of their head that sees shadows. So, the first thing you're gonna want to know about any animal that you're gonna want to quote tame or become friends with is that a lot about the actual animal, like what the animal is or what it's. Uh, uh, what its anatomy consists of, what in the wild their habits are. You actually got to learn the animal. I mean, like Roxy's a my black-tailed prairie dog that I got. I looked. I whenever I got her, I actually looked up a lot about prairie dogs, and I. She is now, we'll let's say tame. She's my friend uh, now because of I followed the followed the way a prairie dog would do it in the wild so you gotta you gotta look at it as each individual animal that you want to become friends with you have to know a lot about that animal and how they interact with each other in the wild uh, a perfect example is ferrets if a ferret was uh, biting you and acting Rambunctious, rambunctious and you want them to quit biting you in the wild their mom whenever they play too rough their mom would scruff them on the back of the neck and drag them along the floor and that's how we trained our ferrets that we got to not bite so hard uh, they still play but they don't bite like they used to they used to dig into you but that's my point exactly you got to know a lot about the animal that you're 
you're planning on uh, becoming friends with and that's that's where you want to start guys now back to the Pareto eye they have a Pareto eye on the top of their their head it is there because large birds eat these guys so these guys live uh, a bunch of their life in the trees above like bodies of water so big uh, birds of prey will swoop down and grab these these guys out of the tree take them up real high and drop them drop them on the ground and eat them so knowing that the first thing you want to do whenever you go to buy an enclosure for an iguana especially a juvenile is do not buy something like this with a screen lid that you have to come from above you want something that's got like this or this that's got the sliding doors in the front where you, access, you can access the uh, lizard from the front of the cage instead of the top that's the first thing you want to you want to do there is nothing worse than being a baby iguana and thinking something's gonna swoop down and eat it so if you've always wondered why if you had a small iguana and it ran from you whenever you try to get it out of uh, its aquarium, uh, and it's fleed. It thinks you're going to eat it. You're a, you're a lot bigger than the, than the animal is, so of course it's going to think it's going to be threatened. Now, if Isabella let me, I'll show you her Frito eye. Come here, girl. Izzy, Izzy, come here. Oh, I don't think she's going to listen to me since she ain't awake. But right there, right there guys you see that that little spot right there on my finger that is the Pareto eye right there I don't know if you can hear me that little spot on her head is actually her Pareto eye um, <clears throat> uh, when it comes to the Hikwana you don't approach from the top Izzy's a lot more tolerant of it uh, now because she knows she knows I'm her friend and I'm not gonna hurt her um, the gentleman that I got her from had kids and they had her in a bird cage like a wire bird cage and she she still does not like my children she will tolerate them as long as I'm around but she does not like my kids a lot of it has to do with the gentleman that gave her to me had small kids and they would run up to the cage and beat on it and try to antagonize her to get her to tail whip and act crazy because they think they thought it was cool or something. Uh, with that said, guys, if you're going to pick up your iguana, you're gonna want to do. Uh, you're gonna want to approach them from the front, right here, up under the head, and go up under the body like that. If you're gonna, if you're planning on trying to pick them up. You can uh, pick them up from under, scoop them up from underneath from behind. Um, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna want to grab onto the back of their tail when you do that. Uh, iguanas can drop their tail like other lizards, and that's a bad thing. Uh, they will grow back their tail, but it'll never be as long as it was. And like uh, Izzy's tail here is she's really big, guys. I mean, she's got a really long tail. She's really big. Uh, Let's see if I can get her to come out, guys. I'm going to go get a strawberry and see if she'll come eat it. Okay, I got a big strawberry, guys. I don't think she's going to come out. She, uh, like I said, it's real early in the morning. And uh, she's not used to me messing with her until about noon. And I mean, it's like 7 in the morning. So, she's probably not going to come over here. I got this big old deformed strawberry. I'll set it right here for her. Is, you want that? Do you want that? Do you want that? Come on. Come on. I need you to come over here. Come on. You want that? You want that big strawberry? And see, tongue flicks like that is a good thing, guys. Uh, that's a sign that she's smelling what's going on. You want this? Here. I'll put it there for you. Get the strawberry, dude.
she's a good lizard guys uh like i said you always want to scoop them up from underneath you don't you don't want to force your iguana to do anything it don't want um i can take her out like even if she doesn't want to come out i can scoop her up and take her out um expect stuff like this guys those marks right there and those scars on my arm and on this arm the scratches and the scars on my arm um that's from her i mean almost i'm probably 90 percent of the cuts i have on my arms and i've have cut i've cuts on my back uh, i have had a toe go through the lip which is really bad these guys have uh really sharp nails as you can see there's one of her nails uh, i do trim her nails probably once a week <laughs> so one of that strawberry oh you dropped it down there on your plate dude <laughs> It was too big, huh? It was too big, huh? Oh, you poor baby. It was too big. You're going to have to climb down there and get it. Okay, uh, yeah. You don't want to, like I said, you don't want to approach from above, guys, especially when they're little and they're not sure about you. Uh, you always want to scoop them up from underneath. The best way when they're little to get them to trust you is to hand feed them. Uh, like as you've seen I got the strawberry and I was talking to her and I got her to come off the log over there and come out here closer to us so we can see her and uh, they do like they do like being uh, pet and having their dewlap rubbed and she really likes having her the spike rubbed right here um, I actually help her take the the dead skin off of her spikes uh, otherwise they dry up and fall off she's missing some of them from that uh, so you never want to you never want to approach from the top guys you never want to uh, force them to do what you what they don't want to do uh, the best way to get grain their trust is actually to hand feed them when they're a baby uh, like you said like I said I just fed her the strawberry and got her to come off her log using the strawberry Food is the best way to do it, guys. They will open their mouths at you. <laughs> especially, especially when they're little. They will open their mouth like that and kind of blow out air and kind of hiss at you and stuff. Uh, acting real big and bad. And they will cock their tail back and get ready to tail whip you. And they will tail whip you. But what you do in those situations is if you have food like collard greens, you can actually stick that in their mouth. And eventually, and they'll eat it, shove it in their mouth when they open their mouth at you. And eventually, they stop. They just stop uh, doing it because instead of them threatening you, you're feeding them, and they start associating uh, that you that you don't really care about their bad behavior. Like you know, it's like you're mocking them <laughs> by sticking food in their mouth. I I've noticed it works really good if they're trying being bitey and stuff that uh, that works really really good sticking food in their mouth whenever they're acting like they're going to bite you uh, when it comes to these guys you can see how big she is down there she's trying to eat that strawberry don't choke on that strawberry dude I should have cut it up uh they do get big, guys. That's what I was um, trying to tell you guys. They don't make good pets. <laughs> uh, you got to be a special kind of person to put up with an iguana. Uh, it's even worse, guys, if you happen to uh, own a male iguana. Uh, during season, there's nothing you can do about them. They act like jerks. Uh, and there's there's nothing you can do about it. Um, if you are their friend, usually uh, females that own male iguanas have an easier time. I guess because the male iguana knows that they're female. Uh, 
if you're gonna get an iguana and you you know it's sex, I would suggest if you're not wanting to have too much trouble to get a, a female iguana. Um, there is a lot of different species of iguanas, guys. This uh, the green iguana, which is iguana iguana. Uh, she's a red red a red iguana, which is a red green iguana. You know they have they have a uh, blue they have xanthic iguanas that are blue and they have they have a bunch of pretty colors uh tom crutchfield breeds a lot of really pretty iguanas uh when it comes to picking a pet if you're wanting a pet that like i said that will hang out with you and you can pet and all that stuff you're looking at the wrong animal uh iguanas are for special you gotta be a special kind of owner to own an iguana. You gotta be a special kind of person to put up with that kind of stuff. Um, patience is a big part of it. Like I said, you, you cannot force an animal to like you. Uh, you have a lot of advantages when it comes to uh, your attitude, attitude towards stuff. So when it comes to these big lizards like like Isabella here um, she's more of we're more tolerant of each other than we are uh, you know I'm not her boss uh, I can act like her boss it doesn't mean she's gonna do what I want her to do I have had her uh, since I've got her it's been about two years since I've owned her before her I had a, a, a male iguana named Sid Vicious and I knew nothing about iguanas. I got Sid Vicious when I was probably, I'm trying to think, I think I was about 12. I actually won him at a fair, which is pretty awful. Yeah, a lot of the reason why uh, these guys, everybody wants these guys as pets, because you can get these guys for $20, you know, like a uh, green, green iguana. And that's pretty awful, guys. Uh, an animal this complicated to take care of. Uh, you do have to have a big enclosure. This one's not nearly big enough. She did have a bigger one than this, but it didn't, it didn't have glass. It had mesh screening, and I could keep the humidity up in it. This one right here with uh, about noon, I'll mist it, and the humidity in here will go up. Right now, it's about 40% it's about humidity. When I mist it, it'll go up to about 90%. Then when it rolls around to three, like when the kids get out of school, I'll miss it a second time. It'll actually go down from about the 80 or 90 percent go down from there. And when the kids get out of school, it's usually at about 60 percent, and I'll miss it again. And then I don't miss it at nighttime. If you keep it too wet, you'll get uh, bacteria and smells, and your iguana could get scale rot and all kinds of stuff. They can get fungus. Uh, like I said guys it's a, a lot of the so called people that say they tame iguanas they don't tame nothing I mean you can't you can't tame a wild animal uh, like I said you can be friends with any animal you can't be their boss guys um, for example uh, Roxy my uh, prairie dog she throws fits and if she bites you uh even Izzy, if Izzy was to, to bite you, you're not going to have a good day. I mean, an iguana bite is nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh, a rodent bite, like from uh, my prairie dog, her teeth are about this long. If she was to bite you, she put those teeth all the way into your bone in your hand. <clears throat> you get a, around that kind of stuff, uh, bad behavior with prairie dogs. Prairie dogs are social animals. Uh, if they get mad at you, they shun you. They turn their back on you and blow you off. That's the way that they uh, punish you. So that's the way you punish them. You don't. I mean, you can't you can't scream and yell at a animal like that, a wild animal. You can't do that with prairie dogs. You can't do that with an iguana. You can't tell an iguana bad iguana. You know, and spank it on the butt. You can't do that. Uh, you pretty much don't. You don't reward bad, bad behavior. You punish it, but in a whole different way. When it comes to her acting crazy, 
is if she's tail whipping me and she's being crazy, which she doesn't do hardly do, she doesn't do any of that stuff anymore. But say she was tail whipping me, what I end up doing to her to get her to stop tail whipping me is uh, grab her tail and talk to her and pet her on the head while I'm holding her tail. And eventually she learned that uh, the main reason why I was holding her tail, not to hold her tail for her to know that I'm holding her tail, it's to hold her tail so she doesn't tail whip me. Uh, but she got used to my hand being on her tail and eventually she quit. Uh, trying to tell with me uh, if you guys really decide on uh, getting an iguana as a pet like I said guys don't get discouraged you have to have to have to become its friend before you you, you have to become its friend if you're wanting it to be your friend so don't force the animal to do stuff it doesn't want to for one, never approach from above because it thinks you're going to eat it. Hand feed as much as possible. If you hand feed, then your iguana will associate when you come with food, it will be ready to come out and greet you and you can feed it. Um, when it comes with, to lizards, um, if y'all want to look at an uh, example of a, a man that knows a whole bunch about taming animals um, I forget his name the gentleman that owns uh, New England uh, reptile distributors nerd he has a YouTube channel and he's got a he's got a bunch of series of videos about socializing with uh, monitors because he sells a lot of monitors that man knows his stuff um, people like that need to be uh, paid attention to a lot more when it comes in the reptile world because he goes about it the right way. He doesn't force the monitors. He gets them to socialize with you. Gets them to interact with you. Uh, that's part of it, guys. Is you got to get you got to get the animal to be interested in you, and to know that you are not here to hurt it. Like I said, humans are a lot bigger than the animals they keep. So, like Izzy here. Of course she's going to be scared if I tower over her. Um, when she's free roaming out, out, I can pretty much walk by her and stuff. But if I, if she gets under my legs, she does get kind of freaked out. <laughs> uh, your attitude is probably the, the biggest part of uh, taming, taming down these big lizards or becoming friends with them guys. Um, don't get discouraged guys I hope this video helped uh, like I said there's not a lot to being friends with an animal uh, remember though you're you're its friend you're not its boss when you start to realize that you're not an animal's boss is whenever you're you are able to become friends with more animals if you're afraid of an animal guys don't keep it for reals uh, if a big iguana like that scares you you shouldn't own it. it. You shouldn't own any animal that you're afraid of. Uh, what's crazy is I am not afraid of <laughs> Isabella. I have almost been bitten by her. That's not a bite. I have been bitten a couple of times by this guy. By Jack here. This guy right here, I'm not afraid of him. I just know his bite. This guy has bitten me a couple of times. And you want to talk about bites that hurt. It's one of the reasons why I don't understand why people are afraid of snakes. These lizards right here, man, have some nasty bites. What are you doing, guy? Uh, snakes don't, guys. Snakes hit you and let go, and you have minimal pain. Lizard bites you, they clamp on like a pair of pliers with some straight teeth attached to it. I hope that helped you guys out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, I pretty much, I think I explained it. There's not a lot to it, guys. Um, if you want to be an animal's friend, like I said, the 
top tips. I'm going to keep saying it over and over again, guys. Do not approach from the top. Because they look, they look at you as something that's going to eat them. Um, do not force them to do stuff they don't want to. Pretty much give them their space, guys. Make sure they have an enclosure. You can't expect an animal to uh, be nice. Let's say if you had a an iguana this size in, in a small enclosure uh, like this, even the 75-gallon. Um if an animal's cramped up, they're gonna be pissed off. So make sure you got proper they got proper space and all that stuff, guys. If you're really wanting to uh, get into big lizards, like I said, check out uh, New England Reptile Distributors videos on YouTube about taming monitors. It applies that kind of stuff, like he's talking about, applies to every lizard. I mean, you wanna you wanna be friends with an animal, you uh, you gotta be friends with it guys you can't be their boss uh i hope you all enjoyed the video as always guys like comment subscribe all that good stuff and uh you have any suggestions for videos leave them down in the comment section below um i hope that's the video helps y'all out if it doesn't i'm sorry guys i tried but that's how i approach uh being friends with animals or, or taming them down <laughs> um Y'all have a good day, guys. Like I said, if you have an idea, leave it in the comment section below. And I'll see y'all guys in the next video.